Okay, today we'll be looking at applications of Newton's laws. We'll be looking at three very common applications and each has a little bit to teach us. So our first example we've got uh, a 60 Newton force pulling three blocks that are attached by strings. We want to find out the tensions between the strings and the acceleration of the blocks. Let's get the acceleration first because that is very easy if we want to consider this is one big system. Because what we really have here is a 1 plus 2 plus 3, a 6 kilogram mass being pulled by 60 newtons. So our acceleration would be 60 newtons of force acting on 6 kilograms of mass giving an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. Once we've got that acceleration we know each of the blocks has the same acceleration of 10 and so it's quite easy to find the tensions. We'll find T2 first and what we do there is we isolate the one kilogram mass and let's do a free body diagram of that one kilogram mass. It's got one important force on it, that T2. There is an up force and a down force, normal and weight, but they're going to cancel out. There is no friction in this system. I should have mentioned that at the top, that it was... But I all, this time I know the acceleration. So when I write that F net equals MA, my mass is 1 kilogram. But now I know the acceleration is 10. And that means my net force has to be 10 newtons. Where is the net force coming from? Well, it's just T2. So I know my tension in that second rope is going to be 10 newtons. Now to get the tension in the other rope, uh, first of all we might want to think about is how is the tension going to compare in how will the tension T1 compare to the tension T2? Hopefully you said that it's got to be bigger because you're hauling more mass behind it but you still have to have the same acceleration. So what we've kind of got in this third situation is 1 plus 2. We've got 3 kilograms being pulled by one force, T1. And so I can write, in this case, when I write F net equals MA, so I'm looking at these two bodies now at once, T1 is the force that's pulling, our total mass is 3 kilograms, so my net force is just T1 this time. My mass is 2 plus 1, which is 3. Acceleration for all the bodies is 10, so I get that T1 is 30 newtons. So we end up with a situation that kind of makes sense. 60 newtons, that's pulling all the weights, which is bigger than T1, which is only pulling two of the weights, which is bigger than T2, which is only pulling the one weight. Second example, this is called an Atwood's machine, and it's kind of a simplified version we're going to assume that it's a frictionless pulley and also a massless pulley. So there's no mass turning around here, which would change the, the problem quite a bit if that becomes a significant mass. But we can assume, assume it's a very light pulley. 15 kilograms on one side, 10 kilograms on the other side. Let's make a little simplification. Let's take G equal to 10 newtons per kilogram just to make the math a little easier. So that means on one side of the Atwood's machine we've got m times g, 15 times 10, we've got 150 newtons pulling this way, and on the other side we've only got a 100 newton force. We can consider this all as one body here. This whole thing, we can consider it as one body because it's all attached by a string. And we're not too interested in the directions because we know what's going to happen. We know that the this mass is going to rise up and this one's going to come down because this mass is bigger. So the directions aren't too important to us. So we could kind of think of this as we could put the two masses on a flat surface. So we've got a 10 kilogram mass and we've got a 15 kilogram mass. On one side we're pulling with 150 newtons. On the other side, we're only pulling with 100 newtons. So that means we can get the acceleration quite easily. 
it's got to equal f net over m. And if I'm looking at the whole system, my net force has to be 150 newtons to the right minus 100 newtons to the left. And our mass, that's the mass of the whole system. That's the 10 plus the 15, which is 25 kilograms. So I end up with 50 over 25, which is 2 meters per second squared. That's my acceleration. The next thing we want to find out is the tension in the string. To get the tension in the string, the tension's an internal force if we look at the whole system, so it won't help us to look at the whole system. What we've got to do is isolate the bodies. So let's focus on let's focus on the 10 kilogram mass right here. So there's our 10 kilogram mass. Onto a free body diagram, we have to have the tension in the string pulling up, and then we've got that 100 newtons pulling down, and the tension is going to be bigger than 100 newtons. We know that this object here goes upwards. So let's write F net equals MA. So here we've got our 10 kilogram mass, so M is 10. The acceleration, we just worked that out, it's 2 meters per second squared. And our net force, well it involves both T and 100. And we know that T is bigger. So what I'm going to do is make this a magnitude equation because I'm not really interested in the directions. I know what's happening in terms of directions. So I'm just going to reduce it to a magnitude equation. F net will be, well the bigger one is T, subtract off 100. That will definitely give me a positive, which is what I want with the absolute values. So now that I've got 20 is equal to T minus 100, and T must equal 100 and 20 newtons. End of story. The last very common problem is the inclined plane. Okay, we're asked to determine the acceleration of the block. We're going to assume it's a frictionless incline. They didn't give us a mass. Well, it's kind of makes us think that maybe the mass is going to cancel out. Let's give the the mass of the block here, we'll give it the letter M and hopefully we'll see that that cancels out. Okay, so let's start with a free body diagram of our mass. That's where we always start and that free body diagrams always start with MG heading downwards. So there is the weight downwards. And the other force would be where there's contact, you'll get a with a surface you're going to get a normal force. And that's the whole free body diagram. Now generally what we'd like to do is break up our vectors into components. Now this one is already vertical and that one's not vertical. So you might think we should break up the normal force. But that's not what we should do. And the reason for that is because we know the interesting stuff occurs straight down the incline. This block goes straight down the incline. So this is our, this is our most interesting direction. That's the most fruitful direction. And so that direction and perpendicular to the incline will be the directions of our components. And so this normal force, it's already perpendicular to the incline. That one's already in the components that we want. But what we're going to do is break up mg into components. And it'll be components that are perpendicular, one straight along the incline, and one of them perpendicular to the incline. Next thing we can say is, well, we can kind of see that the angle in this triangle should be related to 30 degrees. And in fact, you can kind of see right away that, that that even seems to be the same angle. But if you don't see it, you can imagine a very, very s small incline, like 
a very, very flat incline. Then if I have a vector sort of opposite the normal going in this direction and compare that to straight down, you can see that as this angle here increases, this increases in the same way. Basically because these two lines are always perpendicular and these two lines are always perpendicular. So this angle here is going to be 30 degrees. And that means we can actually write what these components are. This component here that's opposite, it's an opposite side, side so it'll involve the sine of 30 degrees multiplied by the hypotenuse, that hypotenuse will be mg. So we end up with this component, mg sine theta. This is the adjacent side, so that'll be mg cos theta. Okay, so let's see what we can write down. We're going to write, um, what I'm going to do is set up equations. I'm going to set up an equation that's all about these forces perpendicular to the incline. And I'm going to set up another equation, which is all about these forces that are along the incline. So these are my two perpendicular components. Okay, so let's look, let's consider, let's consider this direction here, perpendicular to the incline. We know there's got to be no net perpendicular to the incline. And the reason we know that is that this mass never jumps off the incline and it never goes into the wood of the incline. It never goes into the surface. It always goes straight along here. So there's got to be no net force in that direction. So that normal force has to be the same size, I'm working in magnitudes, as mg cos theta. Now if I look along the incline, I do get acceleration along the incline. It should accelerate down the incline. And I can write that this thing here, that component there, would be the net force along the incline. So I can write that F net must be equal to mg sine theta. But of course, F net is supposed to equal m times a, so that means uh, my acceleration must be F net over m, which is mg sine theta, divided by m, and there's the cancellation of the m's that we were expecting. So we get this acceleration, g sine theta. And theta was, that was actually 30 degrees. We could have put that in earlier. So my acceleration will be g, I'll take that as 9.8, times the sine of 30 degrees, sine of 30 is a half, so we'll get an acceleration of 4.9 meters per second squared. And that's all, folks. Thank you very much.